Hello, YouTube friends. Great show today. Let's talk VIX shorts. A recent article in Bloomberg magazine uh, entitled Hedge Funds Are Shorting the VIX at a Rate Never Seen Before. Uh, I'm going to quote you a passage. Large speculators, mostly hedge funds, were net short about 178,000 VIX contracts on April 23rd, the largest such position on record. Uh, and weekly CFTC data dates back to 2004. So this is the, the, the largest position ever seen in, the, in the, 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 the history of this report. So what is this report? It's the Commodity Futures Trading Commission puts out a report called the Commitment of Traders, known as a COT for short. And I got a sample here. It's a very old school looking printout. Um, it comes out once a week. And for any contracts where there are at least more than 20 traders, they have to declare their open positions, meaning you have to tell, for this product, I am short this amount or I am long that amount. So this is a great way of gleaning some, intel some intelligence about what people are thinking, what speculators, hedgers are thinking about products and the future. So this is a great tool. Since 2004, they've been doing it for the VIX, and that's what we're going to look at. Uh, we're going to be able to see what people are thinking, uh, how they're using the VIX as a tool. So um, uh, this is what we're going to, we're going to, this is that kind of an end product. We're going to kind of plot the longs, the shorts, and we're going to overlay it over in green here, the S&P 500, just to understand what was happening historically. So welcome to uh, the Viral ML show and welcome to another an uh, market analysis uh, hands-on with Python. My name is Manuel Amonategui. I'm the author of a few books, including this one, hopefully will be out by the end of the month, called The Little Book of Fundamental Indicators, where I share my favorite hands-on market analysis indicators, things like the S&P 500, unemployment, real estate, the CPI, the VIX, that kind of stuff. Uh, upper right corner, please sign up for my newsletter um, so you can get uh, advanced access to my material and also know what's going on with the book. And if you like this stuff, you know, please give us some big, big thumbs up. Uh, it's always good to know that people are watching and liking it. So we're going to need to get some data. Well, Quandl is a great a great site. I'm not associated with them. I'm not affiliated with them, but I like them because uh, they have some some uh, free data. A lot of the data is not free. They have you know weird stuff like uh, a parking lot occupancy, that kind of stuff. So hedge funds love it. They use it a lot. Uh, we're going to go with the free stuff. They have interest yields. They have, which I've used in the past for other videos, but they also have commodity futures trading commission reports, what we need here. So go ahead, download the, uh, the legacy, the futures and options legacy format for the VIX, right? VIX futures. Download that one. The link is in the description or in the Jupyter Notebook. Once you get there, you will see it will look like this. Uh, there's a date range here. So go with max, get as much data as you can get. Uh, go back uh, to the upper right and hit download and, and hit CSV. And now download the CSV, a comma delimited file to your local machine. We're going to need the S&P 500. We're going to go to uh, finance.yahoo.com, my other favorite site, and get it there. Uh, simply enter uh, carrot GSPC on finance.yahoo.com and hit the historical data tab. The, uh, you'll see a time period, hit there, go max. Get as much data as you can. You can th The data goes all the way up to 1950, so a lot of data. Go done, apply, and download. And now download uh, another CSV on your local machine. So make sure uh, both of those CSVs are downloaded to the same folder where you're running this Jupyter Notebook. So let me go back here. Uh, and of course, the link to the Jupyter Notebook is in the description as well. So I'm going to load this stuff and tell you briefly what we're doing here. It's not we're not complicated stuff. The, the products are complicated. I'll, t I'll be honest with you. But the, what we're doing here in Python is very simple. So I'm going to load the GSPC, the S&P 500, uh, into memory. I'm going to cast the, the, uh, the, the, the date to a date time. It comes in as an object. Then we're going to dump most of the features. We're only going to keep the date and the adjusted close. And I'm going to rename the adjusted close to the S&P 500 underscore close to keep it simple. And I'm going to take the uh, I'm going to calculate the percentage change of the S&P 500. I love the percentage change. So a price has history. If it goes from 200 to 201, that's history, right? You know it was 200 before, now it's 201. Percentage change ignores everything. It really just looks at the difference from one point to the next ignores everything else and it normalizes it. It changes the scale to, instead of being a dollar scale, it's now a percentage scale. So you can compare it with other products regardless of what dollar value they were traded in. We're gonna do that. We're gonna verify by using the tail to make sure we have you know, uh, last yesterday's uh, trading data. We do, we're good. I'm gonna do the same thing for the um, uh, for the CFTC data. It's a different format. So I'm also gonna cast the date to a date. I'm gonna flip it the order because we want to be in the same kind of order, uh, ascending order as the uh, Yahoo Finance. And I'm going to look at the tail to make sure uh, we have all the data we want. I'm going to run this in memory. As you can see, we have all sorts of fields. So this is interesting because uh, um, it offers commercial and non-commercial. So commercial is what banks, banks are considered commercial. They'll do some systematic finan financial engineering. Uh, so they'll use the VIX, the S&P 500 contracts to, you know, to protect portfolios, to do what they got to do. So we don't consider that, you know, psychological uh, speculation looking at the future. Non-commercial, they're hedge funds, they're speculators, they're traders. That's what we want to look at. We want to see what, what, what pros are thinking about the future and how are they using these tools. So 
We're going to ignore all fields except the non-commercial longs and non-commercial shorts. We're going to rename them into VIX longs and VIX shorts to be simple to use. And we're also going to calculate the percentage change of, uh, of those two fields. And we end up with this. So looking good, we're moving on. We're now going to trim the to dates, right? Because the S&P 500 gives us data from 1950s, the the, the COT only to, to 2004. So we're going to cut everything to 2004 like that. We know we have over, uh, we'll have exact same data on both, and then we're going to plot them. Of course, uh, we're going to plot on one scale, y scale, the VIX shorts and the VIX longs, and another y scale. We're going to call the AX axis dot twin x function to get to create a new scale. And we're going to plot the S&P 500. So one is percentages. The, the the VIX longs and VIX shorts are actually percentages. So when one goes up, usually the other one goes down. And um, the S&P 500, of course, is in the dollar amount. So this is what it looks like. It's a fairly you know busy, complicated chart, uh, but uh, you know uh, it's uh, uh, still you know you can still make sense. We're gonna we're gonna clarif clarify that in a second. But in blue you have the longs, in red you have the shorts. And in green, the dotted green is the S&P 500. So you can, you know, I, I love putting the S&P 500 as a map because it tells you, you can see the crash of 2008 right here. And then that bull market that we had since 2008, since practically since today. So this is really deep and we need to talk about this. Uh, the S&P 500 is the 500 top U.S. companies with some 80% of the total equity market value traded in the United States. So practically most of the traded value in the U.S. is represented in the S&P 500. 30% of their revenue comes from outside the US. So a huge portion of that of, of their money they make comes from is international. So this is really the S&P 500 is the 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 heartbeat, the economic heartbeat of the world. It's it's a phenomenally powerful product. All any anybody who comes up with a new financial product compares it against the S&P 500, right? So it's a, it's a benchmark, it's a phenomenal index, it's kind of a worldwide index. I love it. But it is a synthetic product. Okay, it's made up. It's made up of 500 companies and, and their stocks is aggregated somehow and packaged into uh, 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 this, this synthetic derived product. It's a derived product. So it's, it is complicated when you think about it. And then you have the um, the VIX, right? The VIX is also a derived product. It represents the option prices on the 30-day implied volatility on the options of the S&P 500. And to keep this simple, whenever the, the options get erratic, the VIX price goes up. Whenever the options of the S&P 500 get erratic, right? People are getting worried. It uh, the the um, uh, the the VIX prices go up. It means people are worried. People think volatility is there. They worry the market crashes. They're they're trying to hedge their portfolios. Whatever they're trying to do, right? They're worried, right? So uh, VIX. Uh, it, so this is a derived product of another of another derived product, right? So you're getting more and more complicated. And then we're starting to look at these VIX open 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 interest, basically open positions. The VIX shorts and the VIX long. So. Uh, these are very sophisticated players. If I'm bullish, uh, the stock market, if I'm really bullish, stock, I'm just going to go out and buy the S&P 500 ETFs. That's what I'm going to do. All these traders are going to be buying VIX shorts. They're going to be shorting the VIX because they think that, uh, uh, you know, volatility is too expensive or uh, the markets are going to uh, are going to remain calm for the long, for, 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 for you know, for the, the in, in, in the short term, in the short term future. Or um, they think a bull market, we're starting with a bull market, so usually volatility uh, drops, you know, whatever they're thinking about, it's, it's, it's very powerful um, uh, and uh, very complicated. So, I mean, I'm, I'm plotting it here, I'm showing it for you, I'm going to show it to you, but this is definitely no trading recommendations, just kind of, you know, let's all look at it, let's see if we can figure, th figure something out about it, and, you know, I'm not going to pretend to be, a, 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 you know, one of these, these, these um, sophisticated speculators that really understand what's going on here, but... Regardless, here is the data. So um, we can see here, right? Uh, it, this is interesting, right? We clearly see this portion of time here from 2012 to practically today, there were more shorts of the VIX, meaning people were, uh, um, uh, you know, were betting against volatility. They, they were, in, in, I would, the way I would interpret it, they were seeing this, this leg of this bull market keeping on going. They think the economy is strong, volatile. People are not worried. Uh, people who are uh, betting on volatility uh, are going to be wrong. Thus, they're shorting it. Right? Less people are are buying this uh, the VIX. Less people are are worried about it. There are spikes. You can see uh, it usually works as a mirror image because they're percentages. Um, you can see uh, it spiked here right around 2008, 18, I mean, and the shorts went down. But now again, the the you know less people are buying it, a lot more people are shorting the VIX, right? So uh, very interesting. And and here is a spike that was that, that I think the article is talking about. We see it just jump up uh, uh, right now, right? This is like very recent, 
And if you go back, we see in 2008, we had these kind of spikes. Nobody was shorting uh, the, the VIX as they are shorting it today. There was definitely a, a spike of shorting right around the, the you know, uh, end of 2016, but nothing, nothing like we have it today. So this is what's interesting. This is what the article is talking about. Uh, we clearly see, uh, you know, like, um, uh, this is also interesting. A lot of people were worried, let's say in 2006, um, uh, it looks like they were less worried about it in 2009. Uh, and then the market crashed. There was, you know, there was a big jump, the Great Recession. Uh, so, I mean, this is all, you, you know, you use the you use the S&P 500 as your map, right? It's like, you know, it's, it's your map of, of what happened, the history of the markets. And then you kind of have to make up your own stories by looking at the longs and the shorts and why people were doing it. So one more way I want to show you before I end this video. A great way I like to do it when I, when I went up. One of the great reasons I love the percentage change is I like to different. I like to subtract one against the other. So here I want to compare two products. I'm going to subtract the shorts minus the longs. So it's going to hover around a zero line. Whenever it's above, that means the shorts are stronger. Whenever it goes below, the longs are stronger. And I'm going to color them. This is a, a, a neat way of uh, sorry. This is a neat way of coloring things using the 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 axis x v, v line um, uh, function. And I'm also going to plot uh, as a background uh, the S&P 500. So it gives us this nice, neat, uh, maybe slightly easier to see a chart, uh, though it does hide some of the information, right? Um, but here you clearly see that, you know, um, the shorts here were very strong, uh, you know, and you can see it kind of coincide with this leg of the market going up. Uh, there was a little bit of hesitancy here, uh, the way the longs were stronger. When it's red, that means the longs are stronger. And here today, the shorts are very strong. And we, that's why it calls it in blue. So blue does not mean that it's bearish, bullish and red bearish. No, it just means that uh, long or short. Long, uh, sorry, short, the VIX would be blue. Long, the VIX would be red. That's what it means. It doesn't mean anything else. So here we see, uh, which is interesting, a lot more uh, red, meaning, uh, you know, uh, people were more worried. Uh, the people were buying the VIX versus shorting it. And then you see, you see uh, uh, this is extreme. And then finally here we have, uh, uh, you know, it, start, it starts calming down. It starts hovering closer to the, the zero line. That means both the longs and the shorts are close together. Here you have some extremes. It's red. That means the, uh, the, 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 um, the buying of the VIX was very strong, which makes sense. Where we just came out of this recession, people were probably worried, didn't know what was going on. We, nobody knew if it was going to be the beginning of a, certainly I think by, um, 2010, nobody was saying, oh, we're in a bull market, right? People were still under the shock of the 2008 recession. The 2008 recession went, went, went well into 2009 and 10. There were layoffs, huge amounts of layoffs. So this would make sense, right? People are buying the VIX. People are worried about um, a volatility. And finally, it looks like 2012, things got normal. Again, if the chart is correct, it looks like uh, things started hovering nice, neatly around uh, the zero line and with, with clear clear peaks where people are shorting strongly and blue is shorting strongly. And today we're at a very, very strong peak where a lot of people are shorting the VIX. Uh, it's very interesting. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what that means and to, and to keep you know charting this, uh, following it and seeing what happens in the future.